James, the second chapter. We are going to be looking at the 20th verse. And while you turn there, I'm just going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We really, really thank you for this day. <laughs> because this is a day that you have purposed in our hearts, hallelujah, to do the miraculous, Father God. You prepared us for this day a week ago when you told us to expect the great God, yes. hallelujah, to expect you to move, Father God, to expect you to exceed our expectations, to expect you to be true to your divine nature, to your omnipotence, to your power right now, Lord. We expect, hallelujah, the great hallelujah. Lord, we ask you right now, anything that is distracting us, anything that is weighing heavily on our minds, Father God, anything, hallelujah, that is just seeking to get in the way right now, Father God, free us of it, Lord. Yes. We lay it at your feet, Father yes, God. Yes, Any unconfessed sin, any sin of omission, commission, or poor disposition, Father God, we pray right now that you expose it, reveal it, and remove it, Father God. Lord, help us to grow, to become what you have called us to be, that we conform to the image of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. We ask you right now to open our eyes that we behold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And open our hearts so that the seed of the word that is sown today finds good ground, takes root, grows, and brings about fruit at its appropriate time. Now hide me behind the cross and speak through these lips of clay. Whew, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Amen. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord, Savior, friend. Yes. <laughs> yes. Our King of Kings. Yes. Lord of Hallelujah. Lords. Our Redeemer. Yes. yes. Holy, our, our Redeemer, our Healer, our Waymaker, our Strong Tower, our Refuge, our Fortress, our Banner our joy and our peace. These things we pray in Jesus' match, matchless name. Amen. 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 Praise God. James. Second chapter. Verse 20 to 26. And it reads as following. But wilt thou, O vain man, that faith but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and saith faith with his works and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise, also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So I'm very excited, and thus concludes the reading of the scripture. So as you guys could tell, and then the, the worship and the praise and, and even the distraction can just can, can just verify. I'm very I'm very excited about this day. I'm very excited about this day because God impressed upon me that I empower you guys and feed you guys the type of manna today that will get you to become determined doers of the word and not just hearers only. So this is the day that we want to become determined to be doers of the word and no longer hearers only. Today is the day that we stop taking the grace of God and the patience of God and the temperance of God and the long suffering of God and the mercy of God for granted. Amen. Oh. Amen. 
You know, it's, 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 it's very ironic. We seek after the love of God. We chase after the blessings of God. We, we all want the joy of the Lord. And that's wonderful. Those are dynamics of his character. But what happens is our disobedience and our lack of faith we experience the grace of God. We experience the mercy of God. We experience the forgiveness of God. And, 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 and those are the dynamics of the character of God we need so that we can live long enough with our sin and our disobedience so we can embrace and qualify for the manifold blessing. Yeah. A lot of times we want the manifold blessings but and, 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 we, and we want the love and the joy but God is saying you don't need the love and the joy. Right now you need my forgiveness. Yeah. Right now you need my temperance because you acting crazy right now. Right now you need my long suffering because you're not getting it and if I don't suffer long with you you'll never make it to the place of my blessings. Wow. And I'm grateful for his long suffering and his temperance. But when it's all said and done, I want to be the blessed of the Lord as well. Yeah. I want to receive all of God. I want to get to know all of God. Amen. I'm grateful for the grace and the mercy. But I want that joy that the old church used to sing about when they used to say, this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. I want to experience that type of joy. That type of joy that when my friends betray me, the world can't take it away. That when I lose my job, the world can't take it away. When my bills are piling up on me, the world can't take it away. I want to experience that type of joy. Amen, right? amen. And in order to get there, I have to please God. I have to please Him to the degree that I am obedient mm -hmm. to what I know. Mm -hmm. I must have faith in what I know, and I must do what I know to do. The passage that we read, it talks about faith without works is dead, right? Yeah, yeah. And anything that is dead right. needs to be buried. Right. Anything that's dead ain't producing anything mm -hmm. but parasites, mold, and decay. And today, what we are going to discuss are actions of faith so our faith can live actions of faith so our faith can live. I, want, I, want, I have to say this. I believe that everyone here and everyone that is listening, everyone has took time out of their busy schedule to purpose in their heart to be here or to join in over the um, internet or to sit down and watch this at a later date. I believe you truly love God wholeheartedly. Yeah. I, I believe you're, you're, you're truly committed to God and, and, and you trust the word and you believe that the word of God is true. I believe that we live in an era where we have some of the most well-informed people of all times. Any information that you really desire, you can get your hands on it. You can go listen to a preacher. You can follow up and verify that what they're saying is true by reading the scriptures yourself. You can go on the internet and say, you can take notes and then you can go back at a later time and study and say, oh, he, he knew what he was talking about. Or oh, that guy, I don't know what he's talking about. I ain't going around him no more. But anyway, we have ridiculous amounts of information and wisdom and knowledge at our disposal. Yes. Many of us, I kind of go on to say, many of us have a, we've accumulated all types of skills, all types of wisdom, all types of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Walking around living, breathing knowledge banks. Mm -hmm. But we have failed to transition from the accumulation of information into the application. <laughs> we, 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 we get it. We store it up, right, right. but we fail on the application component, which is the work component, which makes all of our information and all of our faith in God null and void because we never apply, apply it. Mm. 
We spend so much time, so much, so much of our resources on gaining the possession of these things, but without practicing them, it's wasted energy, it's wasted time, and it's wasted effort. Are y'all with me so far? Yeah. So, 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 so we must become doers. We must become workers so our faith can become alive and cause us to survive and then thrive. Yes, yes. That's what we have to do. We have to become workers so that our faith can first become alive and then cause us to survive and then we will thrive. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen, James 1, verse 22. James chapter 1. I'm in your book today, brother. James <laughs> chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not only hearers. Watch this. So, so it's important that you hear the word. Amen. Right? It is important that you yeah. hear the word and, and not hearers only. Deceiving ourselves. Oh, I, I should have finished the sentence before I started talking. Look at it. Look at it. it says, be, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own self. If you think just going to church and sitting in church and listening to church and listening to CDs and watching all of these mega churches on television, if you think that that's good enough, guess who you just lied to? Well, on the, that's not me. So don't get mad at me because I just pointed out what the scripture said. But a lot of people got it wrong. I go to church, you deceit. And so what? What are you doing with that? I go to church. You're deceiving. Let me read the rest of the scripture. Yeah, please. Do. All right. Deceiving like your own self. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Yeah. For he behold himself and goeth his way and straightway forget what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth and I hope then continueth and continueth therein he being not for a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word this man this man this man shall be blessed in his deed so it, it says the one that looks and then continues to ponder to recall and then apply, this man becomes blessed in all his deeds. We have to practice what we hear. We have to practice what we hear. When you hear the word and then walk away and go on with your life, you don't verify your trust or your faith in the principle. When you hear the word and then you walk away and you go about your business is normal, you don't verify your trust or faith in the principle. It is in the execution of the principle. That's what validates your faith. The execution of the principle is what says, God, I believe what you said, so I'm going to do what you say, and that's what validates your faith. Watch this. The result of that validation is up to God. See, we do something small and then the result isn't what we think it should be, but that's not your job. Your job is to validate your faith by being obedient. The response is God's responsibility. All you have to do is exercise your faith. Do y'all understand that? Yeah. I'm going to ask you a question, but don't answer it. How many times have you not done what God told you to do because you didn't know what the outcome was going to be. So you failed to execute or exercise your faith because you didn't know what God would do in response to it. That's a, that's a bad place to be because you never gave God the opportunity to chime in on the matter. You never gave God the opportunity to say, you qualify. Because we have been so passive and reluctant to work the principles of God in faith, many of us have a faith that is now flatlined. Flatlined. Any of you ever have a loved one that was in the hospital and they have them up on that machine? Any of you ever been in the hospital and you've been on that machine and it has a little green line that goes back and forth? 
and it go beep, beep. And you watch enough television shows, you know what a flat line is. You get in there and they can't see even it just goes beep. Flat line. Faith, flat line. Because faith without works is. Y'all with me? Amen. Flat line means to die or be so near death that the display of one's vital signs mm. is unreadable. So when you think about faith and your spiritual vital signs, if your faith is dead, then signs of any affiliation or association or characterization of God will not be seen in your lifestyle. Can I, I'm going to have to go there. So many believers live such faithless lives that the signs and symptoms of Christ's character is hard to see in them. So many people walk into the church on Sunday and walk out of the church and from Sunday afternoon until Sunday morning, you would know yeah. them from the party hopper, the prostitute, the drug addict, because the be, because their feet is flatlined. Now watch, let me, and, and, and this doesn't mean they're out there doing those things, but their life that they just, there's no application. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, they're, 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 they're gossiping, just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. I, I gotta you. They, they have no control or restraint over their communication, just like everyone else. Right. They get involved in the petty cares of the world just like everyone else. So there is no distinction because there is no faith exercised. But when you begin to exercise your faith, I'll use something simple like the use of profanity. I exercise my faith when I speak a certain way and because I don't use profanity, right. when people around me talk and they say things, it changes how they speak around me. Right. Yeah. Because they understand that certain yeah. communication, the people that know me, people that don't yeah. know me, they don't know, but then when they find out I, they know me and they know what I'm about, all of a sudden, every fourth word that comes out of their mouth, excuse me, pardon me, I'm sorry, then y'all get fancy and say, pardon my friends, don't amen on that, you're telling yourself. Don't <laughs> 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 well, amen on that, y'all telling yourself. But, uh, but, but, but you get the point. Because I exercise faith in that area, right. I ex right. I'm going to show y'all, I exercise faith in that area, people see something peculiar. And they don't even know it's Christ. Because I don't walk around with, you know, I'm saved and you're not tattooed on my head. I, I do extra on Sundays because I'm with John, but, you know, <laughs> typically during the day I don't have all my regalia on. This is my regalia, by the way. Little, little joke, you know, crosses, belt buckles to say born again, you know. This is my regalia. Not, not a collar and a robe. This is how, this is how I like to do it. But anyway. Let, let's keep it going. <laughs> Listen, real simple. No work, dead faith. Mm -hmm. mm, thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me. Um, let me. There's a difference between work and service. Can I talk to you about service? Is what you do. When we feed the people, that's service. That's not work. Right. When, we, when, 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 we, when we give out when we give out the clothes, that's service. Right. We're serving the community right. in hopes that they can see some something you know that will draw them closer to God. That's that that service. When we clean the church, when we when you know all of that stuff, that's service. Right. Yeah. That's not oh, work. I, I, I that. No yeah. work. Dead faith. Mm -hmm. Dead faith equals no manifestation of the fruit of the spirit. I can hire somebody. To clean the church, right. that don't mean they have faith. That means they got a job. Amen. Amen. So you, I, I just want to make sure y'all understand. There's a difference between service and works, right? Okay. So we have to exercise the principles of God in faith for fruit to flourish, and the fruit of the spirit that flourishes in our life is what will bring about the man manifestation of the changes that we are seeking so we have to work amen? amen we have to work because work is what will help our faith so if you're taking notes write down the word work w-o-r-k because i'm gonna give you a different definition for the believer of what work is amen i'm i'm, I'm taking a um 
I'm taking a trick out of Minister Janelle's bag. This is her thing. She likes the acronyms. I like the alliteration and, and, and the rhyming. She does the acronyms, but she, I'm the, we, we, we're very competitive in my household. So, you know, we're like, anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than do. And she'll say, no, you can't. Yes, I can. Okay, let me focus. Let me get back on work, W-O-R-K, right? This is what work means for the believer. Willingly obey righteous knowledge. Wait a minute, wait. Look at her. Look at her. Let's see if she grinned. Did I get it? Did I get it? Ah, oh, yeah, she. <laughs> Willingly obey righteous knowledge. God wants us to willingly obey the knowledge that we obtain. The righteous knowledge. When he says, when, you know, we've been studying it, we've been killing it in the Old Testament and Bible study. We've been just getting it. And, when, and God keeps giving his people all these rules and all of these, these requirements. And he, but, but what he really wants them to do is to willingly obey this righteous knowledge because there's so much unrighteous nonsense yeah. that we fall victim to. And the wages of sin are... Death. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, look, look how that all works together. The wages of sin are... Death. Right? Faith without works is dead. Oh Lord, y'all, 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 y'all getting this? Y'all getting this? And all we gotta do is work, and we can have life if we just willingly obey righteous knowledge. We can have life because when we willingly obey righteous knowledge, then that takes us away from the sin which pays you in death, and again, it gives life to your faith. Amen. 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 You got to willingly. This means you have to choose. Yes got to choose. That's the beauty of it all. God gives us the option to choose. He doesn't force you. He doesn't twist your arm behind your back and make you say uncle. Mm -hmm. He says willingly obey mm -hmm. righteous knowledge. Mm -hmm. So we have to willingly obey righteous knowledge. And we're going to give our faith some CPR this morning. Hey. Some CPR. CPR um, faith. Write down CPR. Do y'all know what CPR is? CPR, I'm, I'm explaining for those of you who may not um, know it. I don't know if any of you guys know it, but I'm a, I'm a certified first aid and CPR trainer. Um, so, so what CPR is, is if you find somebody that's unconscious, you can go up to them and resuscitate them. With the act of CPR, you can bring them back to life. A lot of our faith is dead, and our faith needs CPR so we can bring that thing back to life. And when you, when you perform natural CPR, what you're actually doing is you're working for the heart. Mm. If you if you didn't know when they're on the, when you're watching them on TV, you know we're talking to person. One, two, three, four. They're actually acting as the heart and they're pumping it. And then they give two breaths. And when they give the two breaths or the one breath, they change the rules every five yeah, years to make you pay for a new training module. But that's another story. Right. But uh, when when you give when you when you when you give the breath, what you're doing is you're breathing. You're breathing for them. Man, that's something else when you think about what CPR is in the natural. Y'all don't want me to start preaching about it. Because you got to act as the heart and as the breath of the life. So, whoo, Jesus, who breathe on this thing right now. Now, we need you to breathe on this thing right now because I need my faith resuscitated. Because I want my faith to live. Because if my faith lives, then I can become alive. And I can survive. And then I can thrive. CPR. So we have to work CPR if we want our faith to be resuscitated. We have to work CPR. We have to CPR consistently, patiently, and with resolve. We have to work CPR. We have to willingly obey righteous knowledge consistently. We have to willingly obey righteous knowledge patiently and we have to willingly obey righteous knowledge with resolve yes. oh lord yes. Yes. you gotta work cpr you got to work cpr listen listen consistent consistency y'all know we say it all the time consistency is the number one attribute of the successful <clears throat> I only became effective as a liar when I did it a lot. Right. Right. Yeah, again. <laughs> Consistently, patiently, and with resolve. I only became a good liar when I did it all the time. Right. 
Y'all don't, like, uh, y'all, y'all don't like preaching like this, but I gotta, I, I gotta get y'all, cause, cause y'all don't even know how y'all got good at some of the stuff y'all good at. Right. Y'all don't even know why y'all so good at being bad. Let me tell you why. Cause you did it consistently. I don't mean to, I hope I don't take the young people, but this is real. I didn't begin, I didn't get good at rolling blunts just by rolling one. Right. 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 <laughs> right. Y'all, y'all, right. I follow. I ain't get good to talking sweet to the ladies just by talking to them one time. Right. I was considered. <laughs> I got an amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Right. Can I get a witness up in there? <laughs> this. <laughs> I was consistent. Listen. And it's the and and. And so, so I had my C for my CPR. That's how I got good at it. So you can't just get good at, at, at righteous living. And you can't get good in faith if you're not consistent. Right. If you're not consistent. If you don't do the same thing the same way over and over again. You have to be consistent. You cannot be sporadic with, right. your, with your dedication to the process. And this is why we have to be so careful. This is why the enemy destroys. Us. Yes. This is why every time you go, this is why every right. time you go to pray, you get sleepy because he wants to mess up your consistency. Yeah. This is why every time you want to get yeah. on the phone and you, you want to pray, someone wants to call you on the phone right. because he wants to jam you up in your consistency. Right. And listen, can, right. and can, can I throw a stone at you real quick? That's why you get sick most of the time. Because he wants to mess with your consistency. He don't want you to be consistent. Because if you can keep you from being consistent. Amen. That's the truth. Everybody always got a problem when it's your time to spend time with God. The enemy wants to jam you up with your consistency. So once you realize that you have to willingly obey righteous knowledge consistently, you're on your way to resuscitating your faith. And then after that, you have to willingly obey righteous knowledge patiently. Oh, oh, but we want it all now. We want it all now. And see, right now, not now, but right now. If I gotta wait for it, I don't want it. That's the attitude we got. That's that's the attitude we got. You know, I I, I I spend more money than I have to a lot of times because I lack patience in a lot of areas. Mm-hmm. Like I'll get on the internet and I'll shop for some things and, and I'll see that there is a vast price difference between what I can save on the internet versus what I can versus what I would spend if I just went to the store around the, but I want it now. So I'm willing to pay oh, but I'm willing to pay to have it now. I'm willing to pay to have it now, but there's certain things that you have to wait for if you really want. Ooh. There's certain things that you have to be patient and pay for if you really want the genuine article. The genuine article. I can go to the flea market and, and buy some um, beater headphones, not beats. Beater headphones. They knockoffs. Right, right. They fake. They're not real. But I can get them in- instantly. Or I can save my money. I can work hard. I can be patient and get the real thing. Yes. I, you got you got that? Yes. But 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 because we're ooh, because we're not patient, we miss out on the genuine article. And then when that counterfeit <laughs> Well, come on, y'all know what I'm doing. And then when that when that strap when that strap from that Louis Vuitton bag when it breaks, when the heel from the Prado shoes fall off, you know, you know what I'm saying. When you go to whip your 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 Versace glasses off in the arm break, no patience. You settle for the counterfeit. It's not real. But in order to have true faith, yes. you have to be consistent. And you have to have patience. They that wait upon the Lord, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up on wings like yes. eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk. You got to have patience in this thing. Amen? Amen. 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 Consistency. Patience. And then... You have to obey righteous knowledge. 
with resolve. All right. With resolve. Not carpet cleaning. Resolve. Y'all yeah. listen. You got to have some resolve about this thing. You got to have some resolve about this thing. Romans 8. Romans 8. Verse 38. Hmm. Yes. And 39. You got to have resolve. This is the type of resolve you need to tie into your consistency and patience so that you can work CPR and CPR will work for you and your faith will be resuscitated. Verse 38 reads, Romans 8, verse 38. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ our Jesus, Jesus our Lord. Resolve. Romans 8 verse 38 and verse 39. That's where your mind has to be when you're working consistently and you're working patiently. You have to have resolve. You have to be convinced. Yes. I am going to keep on going until I get what God says he has for me. I am going to keep on working until my faith yes. becomes alive. And I witness the manifestation of the miracles and the God type of blessings that God says I can have when I act and work and walk in faith. You know, there's an interesting thing about CPR and the natural application. In the natural application of CPR, there's a rule that when you begin to perform CPR, you can, you can, you, you can only stop for two reasons. You can only stop for two, two and three reasons. You have to do CPR until help arrives. Right. Uh -huh. yep. So once you start, you can't stop. stop. You have to do CPR until someone professional calls you and they right. say they're going. Right. right. And you have to do CPR until you are physically exhausted and can no longer do it anymore. Wow. So those are the three, once you start CPR, those are the three criteria for you stopping CPR. And imagine, imagine if you applied that same principle to working your CPR for your faith. Yes. Once you start working your CPR, you're consistent and patient and resolving. You don't stop yes. until your faith is dead, until your faith is declared dead. Who's going to declare your faith dead? Right. Who is qualified to declare your faith dead? Who's qualified? Who's qualified to declare a person dead? Someone with the medical background and the credentials and the and, and all of the documentation that gives them the right, the power, the authority, and the knowledge base to right. make that distinction that someone is physically left the building. Now, who has the qualifications and who has the criteria and who has the credentials to tell you if your faith is still alive or if you're only one person, only one being in all of creation can declare your faith. So until God says your faith is dead, you can continue to perform CPR. Wait, 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 but that's just one. That's just one. That's just one of the criteria for stopping CPR. Mm. I forgot the most important one. But anyway, I'm getting excited. I'm sorry. Until you're physically exhausted. Do you understand that if you work patiently, consistently, and with resolve to get your faith back on point, to resuscitate your faith until you're physically exhausted, then don't you understand that you'll be home in glory anyway? Yeah. If you continue yeah. to work your faith until you can't, until you've done everything physically, mentally, spiritually, until you just tapped out, then God has called you home to be with him anyway. Yes. And he's going to welcome you and saying, well done, because you were consistent and you were patient and you executed tenacity and resolve. You did not back off of that thing regardless of the results because it's God's job to give you the results. It's our job to work our faith. Amen. Amen. 
you're pronounced dead, you're physically exhausted, or until help arrives. <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? Until help arrives. Oh my Jesus. Yes. I used to get stories from my coworkers about performing CPR. And one of my coworkers, he was in the um he was in the National Guard and they were on a ship and the ship had um it, it was messed up and they were stuck and they were stranded out there and there was a guy, he was just out there and he was just out there doing CPR and he said he couldn't even remember how long he was out there just doing CPR. He said, but when he saw the orange helicopter fly over yeah. and he knew that his help was coming, he said he was encouraged, he said he was revitalized, he said he got excited because he knew not that his help was on the way, but his help had arrived. See, his help had arrived. Oh my God! Don't you understand that if you just keep pushing and if you keep if you keep pressing and, and if you keep obeying, that eventually, yes, yes, eventually your help. Ooh, ooh. Come on. Ooh. I got that. Your help is going to arrive. It's time, whew, thank you Holy Spirit. It's time to put all this knowledge and this information that we have accumulated to work, to work and trust God with the result. Listen, 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 listen. I know it don't look like you got enough in A column to meet what's in column B. <laughs> I know it don't add up mathematically. CPR. Work your faith. Work the CPR consistently, patiently, with resolve. I know. I know it don't seem like you'll never get up from under mm. everything that's holding you down. Work the CPR. Have faith. <sighs> Talk different out of that now. <laughs> Whatever program you in, stick with the program. Amen. Submit to authorities. Amen. Be obedient. Go go to your parole officer meetings. I got to do. I got to. I got to. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Check in with them. Amen. Pay your child support. Amen. Put up with it. You talking to someone that used to be on parole, but I worked the CPR and I ain't on parole no more. Amen. Right. You talking to someone that used to have terrible credit, but I paid my bills, I paid back student loans, I paid everything with interest, I, I, I paid stuff off. Now my credit is up near 700. Amen. So work that CPR. Right, right. You know, work that CPR. Don't just say, oh, it ain't going to work. Right, right. Because here's the difference with CPR. See, 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 when we perform CPR in a natural application, we're trying to save somebody else's life. Yeah. But this type of CPR is trying to save your own life. You got to work that CPR. Yeah. You got to work that CPR. <laughs> you got to work that CPR. You gotta work the CPR. And if you work the CPR, the hope for anyone that naturally works CPR is that our hope is that the person that we're performing it to, that they regain consciousness. Yes. Yes. Don't you want to see your faith work? Yes, yes. Don't you really want to see your faith work? Like, and not be guessing not just be hoping, but have concrete evidence that this thing is real. I remember um, I prayed for a friend of mine. He asked me, he was a drummer, and he said, um, he said, can you pray for me? We were at a church service, and um, he said, my hands hurt. And he's a drummer, and you can't do that when your hands ain't right. And and he is an extraordinary drummer. And um, I said, well, come on, let's pray. And um, I prayed in faith, Lord and God. And he went back and he did, he did his hands like this. 
and he went back to playing the drums. You know, I didn't think anything about it. I just prayed in faith, and I left the results up to God. Amen. I laid the results up to God. So he came back like two months later, and he testified, and he said, you know, a couple of months ago, I came up, and um, I, my hands were hurting me. They were bothering me, and, and I was playing the drums, and, and, and they were just hurt. So I came up and got prayer, and he said, and, 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 and Minister Thompson, he prayed for me. He's like, and my hands haven't hurt ever since. But, 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 but and, and it's not, and, and to God be the glory, but for me, what that was, it was like, oh man, this, this, this praying thing, this, this miracle thing, this, it's, it's for real. It works. It, it, it works to the point that my CPR, my resolve is in a crazy place. Like, I pray for somebody in a minute for healing. Don't care. And I'm like, okay, God, the results are up to, me, up to you. That's why y'all know I'll grab the oil in a second. I'll, 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 I'll smack you on the head. You'll be shining for a week. Y'all, I, I, I don't care. If, 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 I'm if, if you post something on social media and you're like, I'm sick, I don't feel well, when I start asking you what hospital you're in, when I start, what are you doing? You, if you know my work, y'all better be on the lookout. Uh, y'all know when I'll be at work. If y'all don't call me back by the time I get off work, I'm like, Pastor, I feel better now. You only gonna do that for two, re two, two reasons. Either you really will feel better, or you don't want me to come over. Cause you know I'm, gonna, I'm coming, and, 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 and if I don't stop by the church to get some oil, I'm gonna get you some extra fine virgin, extra virgin from 7-Eleven or whatever, and I'm coming to see you because my resolve in healing is there. Yes, yes. I get mad when I can't pray for people for healing. I get, I get, I get like, like this is, this is, this is where our faith in God needs to be, where our tenacity needs to be. When there's an opportunity for you to exercise your faith, you should get upset when someone beats you to it. Yes. Right. Y'all saw what I posted on social media about at the Wawa and everything, and the man right, in front of right. me. I was yeah. mad. <laughs> like I said, I wanted to be a blessing. Yeah. Like, like, I'm serious. That's where my mother's, I'm like, like I wanted, I, I wanted to. This man had a. a this, this man wasn't panhandling. Don't get, get, don't get like, This man wasn't panhandling. He wasn't a possible hustler. He wasn't someone I drove past for the last four months, standing in the same place every day, all day long. This was a man I never seen before in a wheelchair, trying to buy some food, and and the man in front of me beat me to it, and I was like, oh, Amen. I guess someone else could be a blessing. <laughs> That's my, that's my Fuck. Can, can we get some people like that yes. that are anxious to be a blessing? Because guess what that is? Mm. That's working your faith. Yes. That's what working your faith is. That's what working your faith is. We got to allow our faith to come alive. Yes. And it'll only come alive when we willingly obey righteous knowledge consistently, patiently, and with resolve. I pray that you guys were blessed today. Yes.